take your seats, please. I'd like to call this workshop to order. Welcome back to your city commission chambers. It is April 10th at one o'clock in the afternoon. We have the workshop uh, dealing with the airport. We have a short agenda, but let me go ahead and ask the city manager, do we have any agenda modifications? No, sir. Excellent. So let's move right into citizen input. If you, have, if you want to speak on this particular agenda item, I encourage you to fill out a speaker form and turn it in. Everybody will have an opportunity to speak that wants to speak today. So if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and fill one out and get it to us. Mr. Cook, we'll go ahead and start off. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first speaker we have will be Bennett Napier. Um, I will ask him um, and our other speakers to speak to the microphone right here in the center of the room. Um, you'll have three minutes for your remarks if you'd give us your Name and address for the record, that would be great, and I will let you know when you're getting close to three. Very good. Bennett, it is great to see you. Thanks Thank for you. joining Thank us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. Uh, Bennett Napier, uh, business address is 325 John Knox Road uh, in Tallahassee, and also residential address 1801 Eastern Forest Drive here in Tallahassee. Uh, so, Mayor Daly and members of the commission, uh, first, we want to thank all of you on the commission and staff that were able to attend the, uh, the recent Greenville, South Carolina trip. As a small business owner and chamber executive com committee member, I am sorry that I was not able to, not able to attend myself uh, last week. I was called, uh, called to fulfill some other demands with my day job uh, at an out-of-state interview with the Prospect uh, Trade Association that we're trying to relocate here to Tallahassee, uh, which would be a multi-million dollar uh, trade association that would bring their infrastructure and operations um, from Philadelphia to Tallahassee. Wonderful. So for the commissioners that don't know me, uh, Partners and Association Manager give you a little bit of background on our company and why I'm here today on this particular topic. Uh, we're a professional service firm, and our core business is providing a turnkey staffing solution for state, regional, and trade associations and certification programs, uh, and we've been doing that for 21 years here in Tallahassee. And our service includes effectively providing within the confines of our company where somebody on our staff serves as CEO of the respective organizations that we manage and serve as the headquarters for, including uh, meeting planning, communications, uh, all of the above, that any function that you see in the associations here in town, which we have almost 700, as you know, um, we do what they do. We just do it for more, one, more than one group. And those and they're also outside of the state of Florida. So I started this, uh, my own company in 1997 here in Tallahassee. Uh, we have 42 employees here. Uh, and effectively, just to give you some perspective in terms of uh, economics and why I'm here today, uh, as it, I'll get to that in a moment, uh, we have uh, our, our lowest starting wage is 30000 Our average wage in our firm is 66000 uh, Just to give you some perspective, which is, I think, somewhat unique for a service firm. Uh, so today's workshop, obviously, the, the topic is very important to you. It's very important to me and our company personally. And so I want to give you some perspective of why I'm coming on this particular topic. In 2018, our staff uh, flew approximately 1.1 million air miles out of Tallahassee Airport. Uh, in 2018, I represent about 185,000 of those miles last year. Um, and that's effectively during the course of our history based on the client mix that we have. So we do meetings all around the country and some out of the country as well. Um, that's been pretty much the average for the last 20 years of our business. And I can per personally attest uh, that the current airport in terms of constructs, uh, in terms of business travel, have resulted in missed opportunities for additional meetings that we could bring to Tallahassee. On an annual basis, our company puts on over 90 workshops, everything from a 50-person continuing education workshop to 2,500-person uh, exhibits and annual conferences uh, in those types of meetings. You're at now, about two minutes and 45. Two minutes, two minutes okay. So meaning I've got 15 seconds? <laughs> I'll give okay. you 20 seconds. All right, <laughs> all right. So let me give you real quick, I'll, I'll make sure you stay on time. So just uh, one thing I do want to mention, during 15 years of our history, one of our clients was the Florida Aviation Aerospace Alliance. So during that course of working with that particular organization, our company had obviously some very fun, uh, subject matter expertise in this area. And just what I can share with you between our personal, my personal flying experience from a business standpoint and our association management experience working with that particular organization and their mission, um, we want to share with you that we, we urge you today to approve an unbiased and comprehensive study that would provide a structure of governance that would bring forward the long-term positive impacts for a regional economic asset like the airport. We should be planning five to 10 to 15 years out and not just 12 months out. And we appreciate your consideration uh, today. Thank, thank you, Bennett. Thank really you. appreciate it. And thank you, by the way, for utilizing Tallahassee International Airport. We appreciate it. 
Next is uh, Sun Suter, if I have that correct. No? Got it. Yeah. Just like I said, Scott. <laughs> Mr. Cedar. <laughs> son. Son. Just, just pass these down. I only have 10. Absolutely, I will. And he'll be followed by Darwin Gamble. I've got 30. You said 30? Three minutes. Oh, three. Okay. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Suter. How are you doing? Your name and address for the uh, record, please. Scott Suter on Winsong Drive behind Lowe's. No, behind Home Depot. And uh, I've only been in the city now for eight months, moving in from the... Uh, Outskirts, Jefferson County was first, and then Quincy, and now I'm into the city. Great. Learning something very new. Well, very, very new. Uh, lived in Miami 57 years, so uh, I retired up here in 19, I'm sorry, in 2003. Um, I, I'm handing out this document, and it's, I have no idea other than this is a workshop, and I know what's basically going on, but this is just sort of an idea that we have as pilots here in this vicinity at this airport. And I am no longer flying, but I do have several thousand hours, but I have stopped flying. But there's 10 items on there, and I just wanted to go over these real quick. Um, the fuels out at the airport are all controlled by one entity, Millionaire. There is no competition. Under that, you see the fuel prices for the area, meaning that pilots that are heading northeast, I'm sorry, northwest, or coming to the south, going down south, will not stop in Tallahassee to get fuel because they're smart enough to do their homework and find the cheaper fuel prices in the area instead of stopping here. And you read those prices as across the top there. Uh, Tallahassee today, as of today, is 543. Quincy, 17, no, not even 17, seven miles to the north, uh, 385. And uh, Perry down south is 416. So that's a, quite a bit of, bit of big savings, especially if you're putting 60 to 70 gallons of gas in your airplane. Um, access to the airport by a general aviation airplane coming in to visit somebody, drop somebody off, or just to come in and maybe go grab a lunch, there's only one place, again, Millionaire. Uh, there are fees to do that unless you buy fuel, then they waive those fees. That doesn't seem fair to the general aviation public, so again, they're going up to Quincy, they're going to Thomas or, or Bainbridge or Cairo. I almost said Cairo. Um, one thing we also determined that there's no buses. No buses from there to the city. Somebody gets out of the airport, they got two options, Uber, rental, or three, Uber, rental, or taxi, or four, a friend. So that's very interesting. I found, uh, you know, Miami has just built the Metro Rail out to the Miami International Airport, and what a, what a terrific, terrific way of spending money. Uh, am I right on time? You've got about 45 seconds. Uh, no motels, no food anywhere near the airport. We just had an event out there. Uh, the Air Force people were there, and they're all asking, where do we go to get some food? Where well, there's nothing around here, so we sent them into town four miles that way or four miles that way. Um, security, you can't go out there and watch airplanes land. They will run you off, and I have witnesses that have told me that. Um, there's only three carriers, as you all know, and uh, you have eight services to other cities, eight services to uh, four in Florida and four out of the state. Um, the fares are high, but I'll be honest with you, I got 386 round trip to Portland, Oregon, but I bought the ticket almost seven months ago. But that was, that was a, a steal, because it's normally 7,800. And um, the last thing I spoke to Gainesville people today, which is called the Gainesville Lateral County Airport Authority, they only have the two carriers, United and American. I'm sorry, Delta and American. They got rid of Silver Air, they weren't happy. Um, my name, phone number, email is on the bottom. Any questions before I leave the mic? Thank you, Mr. Suter. Okay. Really appreciate you joining us. For the record, that's all I wanted. There we go. Next speaker then is Darwin Gamble. He'll be followed by Kevin Graham. Mr. Gamble, I was just saying to you, I think you have a 100% attendance record at all meetings and workshops of the City Commission. We appreciate you coming back. Uh, not quite, Mayor, but thank you very much. <laughs> not quite 100%. Darwin Gamble, 1248 Halifax Court. I think your staff has collected enough information to make a feasibility study unnecessary. First of all, there's nothing broken that changing the governance structure of the airport with this. Second, I think creating a so-called independent airport authority would be a bad idea. What that would do is transfer control of the airport from the elected representatives of the citizens, that's you, to what I think is going to be probably a vehicle for political patronage 
a board dominated by members appointed by the governor. That board would not only have control over airport operations, it would also have control over all the revenue generated by the airport, and I don't think it would be as accountable to the citizens as you are. Now, I don't know why you would want to do this, really, especially in light of the war on local government that our governors and the legislature have been waging for the last 20 years. You know what's going on. They've been shipping away at home rule. They've been passing preemption acts. There is a silly bill over there this time that would even prohibit local governments from regulating vegetable gardens, of all things. In the light of all that, why would you want to give away our airport to a so-called independent authority? Now, I know that recently some of you were at the Greenville-Spartanburg International Airport. Well, that airport is governed by a commission. All six members of that commission are appointed by the governor of South Carolina. And that commission looks a little bit like the Florida Supreme Court looks now. There's not one African American on it. Not one in South Carolina. So please, don't waste your money, or our money, I should say, on a feasibility study, and please don't give away our airport. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Next is Kevin Graham, and then Rick Grant. Good afternoon. Commissioners, uh, Mr. Mayor, staff, like, uh, or Kevin Graham, 3043 Feeney Court. Uh, I'd like to extend, extend my thanks to each of you who were able to participate in the Greenville trip. Uh, from my experience in development and planning, one of the greatest ways to spur on creativity is to study analogs. And I think Greenville was a, a great example of that. I'm speaking today in support of our airport as an economic engine in Tallahassee. I don't yet have an opinion of what structure makes the most sense, but I fully endorse a study of this issue to determine the structure that will support our community objectives at the highest level. As some of you are aware, I'm a strong proponent of economic development in South Tallahassee. In a presentation I made a couple years ago at the Tallahassee uh, Chamber Retreat, I made a statement about uh, uh, building a case for Southwest Tallahassee as the next corridor of economic growth in our community. Many of you have heard me talk about uh, FSU's property in Southwest Tallahassee. It's in, in excess of 700 or uh, uh, in excess of 900 acres. Uh, we have a team of people that are regularly and continually planning our campus. We fundamentally believe that planning is critical to long-term success. Our community is no different. So consider this, within about a two and a half mile span, we have the Tallahassee International Airport, the FAMU FSU College of Engineering, the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory, and Innovation Park. These pillars of our community are prime for building industry and creating jobs. Understanding how these assets can complement each other and work together is critically important. It all starts with a plan. FSU fully supports this study. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Graham. Next speaker. Next is Rick Grant and then Steve Bean. <clears throat> and then Steve Bean. Admiral, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Afternoon, Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners. I'm Rick Grant, 5985 Ox Bottom Hill Road, Tallahassee. My comments are going to be mostly anecdotal. Um, I recently went to Greenville with many of you. What a great trip that was. We learned a lot. We need to do something about it. I uh, also sat on the Blue Ribbon panel uh, some months ago, about four months of studying in Tallahassee. Where are we now? Where are we going? And how are we going to get there? What do we want to look like five and ten years in the future? I don't have a strong opinion on whether we need an independent uh, airport authority or not. What I do have a strong opinion on is we need to make some changes. Um, I'm with Municipal Code Corporation. I've been here for about 21 years, ever since I retired from the Navy. Uh, we are a decent-sized business in Tallahassee. We recently sold a, sold a part of our business, and we almost lost it. And the reason was ridership out of the airport, the cost and the inability to get to certain places. Uh, that was tough. We convinced them that, no, we, we can handle that some other ways, but uh, they, they didn't take them long to figure out uh, it's tough to get anywhere from Tallahassee, and it costs a uh, bit too much. Personally, I sometimes go to Jacksonville or Panama City. I try to keep all my business in Tallahassee, but sometimes I can't get there from here, and I've got to do something different. 
and I, and I hate it when I do, frankly. Um, so uh, in my opinion, um, one of the things we need in Tallahassee more than anything else at the airport is ridership. Where do we get ridership? People. Where do we get people? Jobs. How do we get jobs? We bring industry into town. What kind of industries? I don't know yet. But I know we need to do it. I know, need, know we need to focus on it. We need to get ridership up. We need to get jobs up. And then the airport, of, the airport will be what we need it to be. So thank you so much. Thank you, Admiral. Appreciate it. Next speaker is Steve Bean. He will hey, be followed by Good to see you. Um, Jeff Hendry. So uh, your name and address for the record, please. Steve, Steve Bean, 1101 Pine Street. Um, I'm speaking in uh, opposition to the notion of spending $150,000 to dis help you decide whether to give up control of the airport. I do not doubt that there are ideas out there for improving the way the airport is run, for making it a better airport, more successful, um, better uh, as a uh, helping Tallahassee grow and be a better community. Um, I don't think that we need to change, to, to give up a control of it in order to get those ideas. Mr. Suter had a list right there. Um, I think if you want outside help, in generating ideas how to make the airport better, spend that $150,000 on a contract for a consultant to study what changes can the city make in the airport, as opposed to whether we should give up control of the airport. If you studied, if you spent the $150,000 on how the airport should be controlled, and ultimately decided to give up control, the new governing body, probably the first thing they would do would be to spend another 150000 to figure out how to improve the airport. Skip that step. Just go right to figuring out how to make the airport better. Um, I thought that this notion of adding extra layers of government, um, uh, independent authorities, independent agencies, I thought that had kind of gone out of style. Um, many, many conservatives have objected to that in the, in the federal government. All these agencies, Congress should be making decisions. Well, the same thing here. You guys can make decisions. There's no reason why, if we need different or better management, you can't hire a different or better management manager and still have them report to the city manager. So, um, and to, if you keep control, you're better able to make sure that the goals of airport management serve the entire community and the city's goals and the city commission's goals, um, not some unelected group's goals, which may or may not coincide. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jeff Hendry and then John McNeil. Mr. Hendry, good to see you. Your name and address for the record, please, sir. Jeff Hendry, um, address 3540 Clifton Drive. Um, I want to echo kind of the remarks of uh, Admiral Grant. I'm not here to talk to you about ridership, though. I'm here to talk about that airport being the greatest asset this community has for economic development and generating jobs. Um, I'm not sure sometimes that we, we, we get stuck on governance and governance structure. Um, a lot of assumptions I've heard at the microphone today about how you structure an international independent authority. A lot of flexibility in that in terms of what the makeup of that committee and what that governing body would be. So I would caution you against just thinking that's going to be some body that you have absolutely no control over. Um, in terms of economic development, I think it would present a, a case, possibly, um, that would enable uh, speed to market. Because when we're looking at recruiting business, be it manufacturing, logistics, and distribution, where that airport is positioned at is ideal for attracting those kinds of jobs. And if you want to look at an, a strategy for really building up the south side of town and jobs for those folks that could go through technical colleges, through the TCC, through Lively, and, and otherwise and generate those jobs and skills to be able to work out at that airport with manufacturing-based jobs, with aviation-based jobs, I can tell you that the, the uh, industry of aviation is one of two or three that are projected to continue to grow over time over the next 10 to 20 years. So I just leave you with a, with the um, with the thought that that is the greatest asset.
this community has in terms of recruiting business and industry to come. The universities are going to churn that talent out, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity out of that airport if we are, are, are strategic in the way that we look at it as an economic engine. Um, when you look at the runway, we don't know how blessed we are to have two runways out there with that kind of length in terms of being able. And I would just also ask, uh, ask you to take a look a little bit to the west of us in terms of the defense industry and how we're not capitalizing on all those defense contracts and all that industry that we could be a byproduct and a spinoff mm -hmm. uh, for those industries. So again, I think it's worth every dime that you spend $150,000 worth if it generates a return on investment, I think it will. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hendry. Our next speaker. John McNeil, and then Sue Dick. Mr. McNeil, congratulations. I know you were just recognized as one of the best in your industry nationwide, and I'm proud to have you in Tallahassee. Thank you very much. Um, really enjoyed spending some time with all of you last week in Greenville. I think one of the things we saw in Greenville was uh, a great example of an airport and its adjacent land, most importantly, being used as a critical economic development tool for the Greenville Spartanburg Airport. It's not just an airport to fly in and out of, <clears throat> excuse me. And as a lifelong resident and commercial real estate expert here in town, I can tell you, we have clients, we have investors, we have potential retailers and, and, and manufacturers that fly to this market all the time. I, for one, am tired of our airport being a punchline. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's the reality that we live in. Um, but I think I, I highly encourage a long-term economic study of our airport, especially the adjacent lands. We have a tremendous uh, need for industrial zone dirt in this, in this town. We have a tremendous need for turnkey ready dirt to where we can react to an opportunity if and when it comes, and we can react quickly. I can't speak enough of how many calls we turn down on a daily basis because either we don't have the land or we don't have the product to put these people. So with that, again, I highly encourage uh, this long-term study. I think it is money well spent, and uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. And again, congratulations on your national award. Thank you, Mayor. Sue Dick and then uh, Alan Hanstein, and I believe that's the last speaker we have at this part of the meeting. Ms. Dick, good to see you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, and thank you to uh, those of you that participated in our trip to Greenville. I know the feedback we continue to receive from the business sector and the business community was they appreciated the opportunity to spend time with all of you and uh, to, to learn. Um, we're here today, the Chamber of Commerce took a position about a year and a half ago uh, under the leadership of Heidi Otway uh, with regards to asking for a study to look at structure. Uh, our ask is that you advance that today and appreciate all of your consideration. I would also like to bring a couple different perspectives to this. I've had the uh, opportunity to serve on the Airport Advisory Board for 19 years. I want to pause and, and recognize the excellent staff that is at the airport. Uh, our interim director and the entire team I, can, I have seen over years work very, very hard to, to advance the efforts of that airport. Um, I, I also want to emphasize that I don't think that while the governance structure is something that can be looked at and determined, I know right now that there are different models as referenced by Jeff Hendry where that you would still have the input. That is something that you all could determine. So uh, I, I think it still stays attached to, to the city as an asset, but I think it really points us to what we're trying to do. We're trying to create jobs. Uh, we have the opportunity to work every day with your Office of Economic Vitality, what Christina Paredes is doing in their efforts to work on industry, to advance the opportunities to create jobs, uh, is something that we're committed to and we want to keep doing. I know the Magnetics Task Force is, is working very hard, uh, actually uh, knowing that hopefully in the next several months they will continue to work hard and, and bring maybe potential individuals to look at our community. So um, we are working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with Office of Economic Vitality and as a chamber, we'll do everything we can to support them. So our commitment stays uh, the same. Uh, we know that this airport is a regional asset, uh, not only just for our, our area, but our neighboring counties. And uh, as we look to the future, we hope that you'll give great consideration to not only advancing the study, but what this could look like for, for our community and our region. Thank you very, very much for your time and your leadership. Thank you. Mr. Hanstein, how are you, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alan Hanstein, 3186 Dunbar Lane. Uh, Mr. Mayor, commissioners, staff, appreciate it. Uh, I am a, a appointee of the Airport Advisory Committee. I am here today uh, as a member of that committee, but not on behalf of that committee. 
I uh, am also a resident here, and as anybody who follows me on Facebook knows, I fly in and out of the airport quite a bit, both on the commercial side and the general aviation side. And I'm here today just to uh, ask for all of your support for our staff. Um, I know Sue mentioned it just a minute ago. I wanted to make sure we didn't get past it. Uh, I've been a recent appointee of the committee, but it's been amazing in my time in just a few months to uh, see uh, what uh, Interim Director Pollard and Associate Interim Director uh, Derwin uh, have done and continue to do, and the entire staff who are represented here. So I want to make sure that they get the support that they need. I would ask that we remove those interims at your earliest convenience. Uh, that's a, a personal position. And uh, just want to make sure that everybody knows the value of the airport. Uh, I've been um, able to see the impact it's made in Hurricane Michael relief uh, earlier this year, military training and operations more recently, and it is an asset. Um, I'll let y'all decide on everything else, but I didn't want to get past this day without making sure that we recognize the incredible staff that we have out there. Thank you. Alan, thank you very much. Do we have any other speakers? Mr. Cook. I have no other speakers. Is there anybody here that has not had a chance to fill out a form but would still like to speak on the issue? Mr. Langston, sure. If you wouldn't mind just filling one out after the fact, your name and address in three minutes, okay. please, sir. My name is Mac Langston, 8845 Glen Abbey Drive. I apologize for not filling out a uh, speaker's uh, slip before I got sure. up here. Uh, one, it's exciting to hear everyone talk about the value of the asset we have at the airport. It's something that we've looked at and known for quite some time. And uh, as corny as it is, there was a, a saying by uh, uh, one of the generals of World War II that uh, if you're going to measure the heartbeat of the city, take the pulse of the airport. And I think that's uh, true right now. It plays a very uh, vital role in, in the community. Uh, Unlike most in here, we, we live at the airport. We have invested at the airport over many, many years. We've got a, a tremendous uh, amount of time. Uh, we've been in business for 38 years now. Uh, with all of that focused on bringing business, bringing opportunity to Tallahassee. We uh, hire people from Lively, uh, vocational school, from the a &P school. Uh, we service aircraft from all over the country, literally all over the world. We sell aircraft from here all over the world. There's not a lot in the infrastructure that the airport has that, that, that we need. We have, a uh, gentleman commented about the runways. We are very fortunate in what we've been able to put down to facilitate uh, uh, use of the airport. And I got it, 90% of, uh, of, of the work is just having it ready to go when you get that 10% oppor uh, opportunity to, to chase it. And, I think we're in a better position right now than we have been in some time to attract businesses. And I would encourage this group to work together cooperatively and try to figure out what's best for the airport and for the community. And look at the airport, uh, both as it exists under the city structure, what it does, it doesn't do well, and look at it, what it would happen, what would, how the uh, authority, an authority structure would help that or hinder it. And uh, our concern right now for us is, is that we've had instability, and we've had instability out there for quite some time in uh, the leadership. And when I say over time, some of you may not be aware, we've, again, 38 years out there, we've seen uh, from Hopkins to uh, Bob Johnson to, and then you can go through about 20 different airport directors and staff out there. So our, our experience has been that we've had that change. That's hurt us in many ways, uh, the inability to have a, a solid, uh, vision. I hope this yields that and uh, and generates that kind of focus for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Langston. Appreciate it. Any other speakers? No, sir. Anyone else here that wishes to speak? Okay, before we get into uh, the presentation and commission discussion, I am going to take a second and ask every member of the Tallahassee International Airport that is present to please stand and be recognized because we were just awarded the number one municipal airport yes. in the nation. We are very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pollard, I'm not going to ask you to stand because you'll get all red on me in the face and everything, <laughs> but I want to recognize you as interim director for winning the <clears throat> number one director of a municipal airport Absolutely. in the nation. In the same year, we took both Awards home. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I'll turn it over to the city manager. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's well-deserved uh, recognition. Certainly, we're very proud of the good work that David and his team do every day, keeping our airport looking good and, and really a beacon for our community. And I think it's an important topic, and that's why we hear so much about this. Um, you heard in some of the speakers that this topic's been out there for a couple of years, maybe not quite a couple of years, but it's been some discussion. And uh, today we wanted to present you a single topic workshop, right? So we have plenty of time to sit and talk and roll up our sleeves and, and evaluate the airport. And in fact, we've got a very thorough presentation uh, that's gonna be led by our interim director, uh, David Pollard. He's joined by a consultant, uh, Phil Jeffco, with Michael Baker International. Uh, uh, Phil is a, a true expert. I think you've met him before. And so I think we've got the right folks at the table uh, to lead us through this. Um, at the conclusion of the presentation, we've made a recommendation that you authorize a feasibility study. Uh, that feasibility study, we believe, could take about nine months. This is um, an in-depth analysis of what we would anticipate. Uh, we believe that timing to be in line with any kind of legislative action that might be necessary if you chose to move to an authority. So uh, that would be our recommendation. But first, uh, again, we've got a thorough presentation. We'd like to walk through it. I'd like David to take the lead and, uh, and go ahead and begin. Thank you, City Manager, and thank you uh, to you all for your leadership, Mr. Mayor, commissioners, appointed officials. It's my honor and privilege to be before you today, and I too would like to recognize the hard work and efforts of our staff each and every day uh, we're out there behind the scenes ensuring a safe, secure, efficient, and customer-friendly airport. It's an airport for all, all members of the community and region. Our catchment area that we serve, it's so important that they understand how hard our staff is working out there each and every day. I encourage our staff and our senior leadership uh, in all that we do to be strategic, be visionary, and be bold. And the be bold part is to look at new ways, not do things the way we always have, but let's look at new ways to, to move the needle and move forward. So with that, I would like to uh, walk you through the presentation we've got here today. Uh, I, I hit it head on on the start of the uh, first slide here. Uh, we are vital for biz business and economic development. It's, it's important that we all recognize the regional asset that we are. Our efforts do not stop at our fence line of the airport. It's very, very important to, to understand that. Our efforts are, are out there. Our planning is out 100 miles. Yes, we think about Port St. Joe. Yes, we think about Appalachia Regional Planning Council's efforts to develop a freight transportation zone in the I-10 corridor and our proximity to that I-10 corridor. So we're thinking about these things much further out from the airport. Some of the key industries here listed of, of what the chamber has uh, identified. I've taken those right off of their website, uh, but key there is the trade and transportation and logistics. I wanted to chart so you could see all employers, and this is uh, coming straight off of OEV's website, uh, all employers, what you see here is the logos of all employers that have 200 employees or greater. And so uh, we wanted to let you take a quick look at that. Uh, two in particular, Dan Foss and GT Technologies, uh, we've got to have uh, two anchors to our foreign trade zone. We've received letters of support uh, from those two businesses uh, to anchor our foreign trade zone, meaning they uh, do have intentions of doing business internationally. They're doing business internationally, and we certainly appreciate their support. Targeted industries, again, I want to uh, just take you right down to uh, the manufacturing and transportation logistics section. That's where we come into play with companies such as FedEx, uh, looking at other cargo carriers and looking at our cargo ramp areas and things of that nature of how we can bring that to uh, this community. We want to play a part. I've uh, recently uh, started field trips with our senior management staff. I've asked us to get out into the community that we serve. Uh, in the region and start looking at, at uh, key areas. We've gone to Innovation Park. I've spoken to the board there. I've spoken to uh, MagLab. I've spoken to Dan Foss. We're getting out to the State Emergency Operations Center. We're getting out in our community and, and becoming a part of it uh, so that we can better understand the needs of those business owners and the businesses that we serve. We've heard comments here today about the importance of 
air travel and the importance of this airport uh, to this region. Higher education and workforce development. Again, uh, we sit on a gold mine here with our universities and, and colleges that are around us. Uh, we've got Lively uh, Technical Center uh, here in our backyard. College. College, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Thank you, David. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but we're, we're working uh, with them. We recently renewed their lease on the airport. They do a wonderful job training airframe and power plant mechanics right in our backyard. And, and I'll talk about major repair and overhaul facilities, but they can serve as a, as a feeder to these businesses. We can, let we, me stop you real quick, David. Because of the fact that, that we have not recruited those industries here yet, we are graduating these talented, well-trained individuals, and where are they going? They're going elsewhere, Mr. Mayor. Right. They're going to other airports to work, so uh, they, we, may, we have limited jobs here. Uh, they're going to go to other airports and, and work, uh, A&P mechanics, uh, avionics, things of that nature. Uh, so the more we grow here, the more we can keep that talent here locally. Thank you. And, and David, if I could add to that, uh, Mr. Mayor, because they are also trained in subspecialties. Uh, airplanes have electrical systems, they have air conditioning systems, uh, and so many of them will end up <clears throat> taking jobs in those career areas as well. Uh, engine maintenance and repair. Uh, yes. So, so they, they all don't go to airports, but they can go into one of those subspecialty areas Certainly, well. they all branch out into their various specialties. Right. Absolutely. Good point. Just a quick overview of the airport and some of our activities out there. I'm pleased to announce, if you have not caught it yet, uh, the Florida uh, Department of Transportation has released the latest results, March 2019, that reflect the economic impact of this airport. Uh, they did a statewide study. They looked at all airports in Florida. Uh, you can find that by going to their website. Uh, but our previous, they do it every five years. Our previous economic impact was 399 million. You'll see that's risen up over 50% uh, to the 599 million. So we're on the grow, uh, on the move. We're on the grow. Uh, we're we're uh, stimulating activity. Uh, we're creating jobs. Uh, our passenger traffic is up. Uh, all indicators are up uh, in terms of growth, and uh, we're doing a great job. But uh, again, more needs to be done. Quick snapshot of our current nonstop destinations, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and Silver Airways provide service uh, to our airport, a uh, total of seven cities, uh, you can see there. Uh, the next slide shows you visually uh, where we're going uh, direct from Tallahassee. You'll see they're, they're all basically major hubs, and you can get to uh, any destination from those hubs. In terms of market share, uh, Delta uh, closing out calendar year 2018 is our market leader, uh, as you see there, with uh, over 49% of the traffic. Uh, what we're seeing uh, in terms of passenger traffic and activity levels, uh, American Airlines with their numerous destinations, so Delta only goes to Atlanta, American Airlines is going to Charlotte, Dallas, Miami, uh, and D.C., and so from that standpoint, uh, they're capturing more of the market share here. In terms of seats, next year I expect that uh, market leader uh, to shift to American. So we're right on the cusp of, of shifting uh, to a new market leader, which would be American Airlines in this community. Again, we reached a 10-year high in terms of passenger traffic activity levels. I'm very proud of that and the work of our uh, staff. Uh, we're working very hard to break down the barriers, break down the walls, become more business friendly to our airlines, our air carriers, our tenants, our stakeholders. All those people that do business out of the airport or have a vested interest in the airport. Uh, the comments we heard uh, previously in terms of fuels and competition and, and all, it, it perfectly aligns with our efforts and our focus as we move ahead. Uh, today happens to be the last day for comment. We're uh, working on a rewrite to our airport minimum standards documents. That's the document that it takes. Uh, we set the requirements of what it takes to do business at the airport. Uh, in terms of uh, stimulating competition, uh, breaking down the walls and the barriers and the unnecessary rules and regulations that we've had over a period of time. We're trying to take all that out and become as streamlined 
and business friendly as we can so that we listen to the people that are talking to us. We're getting out in the community. We're hearing more uh, from those business leaders and stakeholders, and, and we're doing something about it. In terms of load factors, uh, they're on the right-hand column, and, and uh, so uh, I'll just explain real quick. Uh, ATL is Atlanta, CLT is Charlotte, uh, DCA is, is Washington, D.C., uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Tampa. Uh, those are the different uh, seven different routes that we serve, uh, minus Orlando. Uh, that's reflecting the activity that we had when Silver was flying to Orlando and uh, they no longer provide that service. Uh, but you can see there from the, from the chart and graph, uh, Fort Lauderdale in, in the Miami area in particular, if you combine those two markets between American and silver, uh, our highest demand market is uh, the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. You know, the most people are typically flying through Atlanta, but it's in terms of where they wanna get to uh, is down to South Florida. In terms of air freight and the air freight trends, uh, you'll see the spike there in 2018. I'm proud to, uh, uh, and I was even impressed as I put this together to look at the numbers and see uh, the 14.3 percent increase uh, from the previous year. So our cargo is on the rise, and again, that's uh, part of our efforts and working collaboratively in this case with FedEx and uh, certainly having our eye towards future carriers that can help us with. Uh, cargo and freight out of this airport, uh, if it's a future UPS or DHL type activity or carrier. Uh, we have a strong cargo freight market in this area, and I'd like to continue to uh, move forward and capitalize on that and, and the asset that it is for us. You may not know, but when we reworked our air carrier or air cargo ramp a while back, we actually designed it to accommodate future capacity. So FedEx is not using the entire ramp, uh, but also in our master plan, we reflected additional uh, sort and distribution type facilities and an expansion of the ramp uh, so that we could accommodate that growth. In terms of fixed base operator, uh, you heard from one of the speakers, uh, Millionaire is the current provider of uh, fuel sales. Uh, there's a lot of rules that come along with that. Uh, in terms of uh, fuel flowage, uh, the total fuel flowage increased over 25% in 2018. Uh, that falls in line with what we're seeing in terms of aircraft operations. I like to look at things separately in terms of commercial aircraft and, and their operations, general aviation and military. And I like to look at those separately and see how we're doing on all fronts, but in this case, uh, you see the, the fuel flowage uh, that's going through the airport uh, is up over 25% in 2018. I love this slide right here. Uh, just that reflects a, a broad array of the activity that's going on at the airport on any given day. Uh, we got military aircraft operations, we've got helicopter uh, operations. Uh, the diversions, a while back I forwarded a, a picture of uh, and this just happened yesterday, by the way. We got two Delta diversions in. Uh, bad weather up in Atlanta. Planes flying up from Tampa and Miami uh, that are uh, trying to get to Atlanta, but because of the bad weather, they got to put it down somewhere. And where we lie geographically, uh, we do see and get a lot of diversions. You know, that helps with fuel sales. That helps with activity. Uh, we're putting our best foot forward to keep them uh, taken care of while they're here. They may simply just need a charge on their phone. They may need a slice of pizza. They may, may need a bottle of water. If it's that simple to take care of the customers that come through this community, we're gonna do it. <laughs> In terms of, now we might bill the airline for those pizzas, but. David, can I interrupt you for a second? <laughs> you know, commissioners, I don't pass these along all the time, but I get more emails than you can imagine from people that aren't from here and had no destination here, but they get diverted to Tallahassee, they come to our airport, and they send emails of how hospitable we've been, and it's really Dave and his leadership, and really taking good care of them and being a good host, and that's part of being a good ambassador for your community. So I just want to take the opportunity to say that. I don't send those along every time, but you couldn't imagine how many of those we get because it happens on a regular basis. Good job, David. Thank you, sir. In terms of aircraft operations, again, like I said, I like to break them down uh, separately. Uh, 
this was a very impressive graph. As you look at uh, the activity here and the growth, 11% increase in general aviation and airline operations, you do see the dip in the military traffic. We, we just went through and completed a, and you'll see it here in a minute, uh, an over $8 million project on rehabilitation, reconstruction of our south ramp. We redid all the helicopter parking areas, that previous picture where you saw all that helicopter activity from the military. Uh, that's what contributes to the dip you see here with the military traffic. But uh, in the last month or two, that military traffic has come back at uh, over 50% growth uh, from the previous calendar year. So military traffic is now again on the rise. In terms of terminal improvements, uh, Again, just some quick visuals in terms of uh, what's happening in the terminal. This is important to the carrier. Sometimes they don't like to admit it because they want to squeeze us on costs, mm -hmm. but we have to put, uh, put our best foot forward as a community and say, uh, we're going to have a modern and efficient terminal facility. Uh, we're going to think about things like uh, Cat 6 cabling and, and the way that we can bring in a carrier and let them plug and play. Plug in your computer, set up your gate displays, and go. You fly the plane, we'll do everything else. And so we're working on that, and, and uh, it's working. We're getting a lot of positive feedback in terms of our terminal facility and making it more convenient for the customer and, and the users of the facility. This is uh, just some quick uh, airport awards and recognition. You mentioned one earlier, uh, but I'm pleased to report we did receive the 2018-19 Air uh, Commercial Service Airport of the Year Award from Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, we also received an honorable mention from Airports Council <coughs> International in terms of our Airport Ambassador Program. Uh, we've received a Certificate of Appreciation from Honor Flight Tallahassee and uh, 2019 uh, Most Creative Campaign from the United Way, uh, our golf tournament that our staff does a wonderful job of putting on, uh, raised a lot of money for United Way this year. So. In terms of available parcels, uh, so we, there are several aspects. We, we, we're working on air service development. We're working on competitive airfares. Uh, we're working to stimulate competition. We're working on breaking down those rules, regulations, and requirements that it takes to do business on the airport. Uh, but in terms of available parcels, and so that we marry up with what's in our airport master plan uh, that we presented to you on March the 6th, uh, there's these parcels, and I'm going to go to the next slide here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, these parcels uh, represent the available parcels for development. A lot of times people drive by the airport, they see all the open land, and they think that it can all be developed. That's not entirely true. Uh, we have a lot of airspace that we have to protect. We have building restriction lines. We have runway safety areas, runway object free areas, all these imaginary surface areas that we have to protect out there. And we're doing that each and every day. And uh, the development plans and uh, proposed development uh, needs to fall in line with those plans so that we can ensure on a foggy day when an aircraft's coming into land and they might need to do a missed approach um, that we've protected that airspace around. And, and we're thinking about things of the height of the structures, the obstruction lighting on top of those facilities and things of that nature. Some of the catalysts for airport economic development, uh, these are just a few, I won't read them to you, uh, but we've got a lot in motion. Uh, you, you've heard from us on the international facility, uh, Customs and Border Protection you recently, uh, on March 21st, approved our user fee uh, uh, status. Uh, that's a conditional approval, meaning we have to start construction on that facility uh, within the next three years. So we're currently moving through the design and scoping of that facility and uh, we'll be moving forward. That will become the home to the customs agents here in Tala Tallahassee. And from there, uh, we'll be submitting our formal application for the foreign trade zone. And that's, uh, again, working with OEV, our partners at the Chambers of Commerce, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we're working on that uh, to bring whole picture and make us as competitive as we can be. Uh, we've been at a comp competitive disadvantage and when you look at those airports around us, and many people don't always understand why the international. It's a long-term effort. It's a long-term effort to make us more competitive. And as we move forward, uh, uh, one of the speakers mentioned uh, some of the things around us, okay, and the, the spawn-off businesses. You know, we've got uh, Embraer uh, manufacturing or assembling aircraft in Melbourne. 
We've got uh, Gulfstream in Savannah. We've got Airbus in Mobile. We've got all these things around us. I believe that we can be a part of that. Yes, sir. We just got to put our, our best foot forward and develop some of that. David, before we move to that slide, the foreign trade zone is not limited to the property in and around the airport, though. Just give us a feel for the breadth or the, the scope of uh, the foreign trade zone. Sure. So what I did a while back is I, I got with Customs and Border Protection. I had them give me the map of all the foreign trade zones in Florida, and you saw a big hole. You saw all the ones around us, but in this part of Florida, uh, you, you didn't see anything. And so we become the center of the future foreign trade zone, and we intersect with the Panama City and the Jacksonville, uh, and again, uh, the freight transportation zone and some of those other things that provide effective movement uh, from the ports. And now we can, you can seamlessly move from the ship along the I-10 corridor and into our airport, assemble your widget or gadget or whatever it may be, and then move it back out. You know? so, uh, that's uh, 60, uh, 60 minutes and 90 miles is, is the uh, criteria for the foreign trade zones and how they intersect. Some of the current projects we have in motion. Uh, this is the South Apron Rehabilitation that I spoke of, uh, complete resurfacing of that, and also uh, new helicopter parking pads. We designed those helicopter parking pads to the Black Hawk helicopter, which you saw in some of the previous picture. Uh, those fill up regularly. We've provided for an allocation of additional helicopter parking uh, within our master plan process, and we do intend to build more. But from this standpoint, uh, you see the Blackhawks there in the picture. You see two in the air. And you can, if you look closely, you can see some other helicopters that are able to utilize those. So, uh, so we're looking at all aspects of aviation. That's very important. Whenever I speak, uh, I, I don't like it always to be focused on commercial aviation. General aviation and the business aviation, the military uh, traffic is, is very important to us, uh, having a holistic airport, a competitive airport, and an airport we can all be proud of. Airport security systems is another project behind the scenes. We've put in a whole new network backbone to our uh, airport security system, fiber optic, CAT6 cabling, uh, new cameras, new switches, uh, all happening in the background. We've also acquired some portable x-ray equipment when we get those unattended bags that uh, somebody might leave behind. Uh, we need to approach those cautiously. We're looking to minimize the disruptions, the operational disruptions that could become a full terminal evacuation. These are the tools that we use to be able to go back, look at, and identify who left that bag there. And is there any ill intentions, or did they just simply leave the bag and run into the restroom real quick? It happens every day. But uh, we're able to look at that, make smart decisions, work with our friends at TSA and avoid the full terminal evacuation, because we can paint the picture through our camera surveillance and through other things that happen along the way. Some of our upcoming projects. Passenger loading bridge improvements. We're working in the final stages of a uh, RFP type document that we will be moving forward with. Uh, new in, uh, flight information display system improvements and the web interface of that system so that you can go out onto our website and look at flight information. Uh, we're working on air traffic control tower improvements. That facility was built. We own the control tower, if you're not aware. We own the control tower and lease it back to the FAA. And that facility was built in, uh, basically finished up in about 94, I believe it was. So that facility is showing its age. We got some roof leaks. We got some water intrusion. Uh, we're trying to uh, fix that facility up and get it in tip-top shape uh, uh, for our friends at the FAA. We're working on improvements to our uh, Tallahassee Fire Department provides our aircraft rescue and firefighting services. Uh, they do a wonderful job for us. Uh, this is just a modernization of that facility. Uh, we'll be working with them on. Also uh, working on a design of a new rental car facilities I think we spoke about previously. Uh, those original facilities across the street uh, were part of the original airport in the early 60s, so uh, they've asked us to accelerate that project and we're moving forward uh, with the design of that. Runway 1836, uh, that's our north-south runway. Uh, we're uh, starting, gonna be starting design very shortly to improve, uh, make improvements to that uh, runway. Uh, and 
uh, rebuild that and along with the parallel taxiway and the adjacent uh, taxiway connectors. And also start and design of that international facility. And with that, I'll hand it off to Phil and let him talk to you about airport governance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So uh, a little over a year ago, I had the, the opportunity to, to speak before uh, the commission here, and now we have some new bright faces in the, in the crowd. And, and uh, sorry if I read some of faces. my... That's right. Here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a habit, yeah. But we wanted to take the, the time we have to uh, give you a little bit of background uh, about the different forms of governance that, that, that are out there that, that I see every day in the industry. I work all over the world in, in the aviation industry. It's what I do. And I uh, wanted to give you a little bit of feedback. Uh, there's definitely uh, positives and, and, and negatives associated with every form of governance. Uh, here today we want to give you some, some ammunition, some, some facts, and, and give you something to think about. Uh, things I'll say today aren't necessarily uh, black and white, hard uh, and fast. Some things are potential benefits and potential um, disadvantages. But we'll, I'll, I'll try to, to, to bring that up as I go through this. Um, if we look at in governance and our current governance here, it's a city-owned city airport facility. It's done well over the years. And uh, it is governed by, uh, by you folks. And in, in addition to that, we have uh, an interim director of aviation that is responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the airport. As we've heard already, they, they do a great job here, and uh, we want to continue to do so. We're looking at uh, operating an airport that has, when, when you start looking at the uh, support facilities and, 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 and infrastructure, whether it's the police protection, uh, law enforcement, the uh, fire protection. You know, that gives us about a 72 uh, employees that we have here at the airport. And uh, they're working around the clock to make sure that the place is safe and efficient for, for the general flying public. Um, everything that is earned on the airport stays on the airport. I don't know, a lot of folks that we run into you know, in the community, they think, well, my tax dollars are paying for this and that, and um, it's not exactly quite that way. Uh, the folks that, that, that pay uh, to, to operate the airport, if you fly, your taxes and your airfare uh, goes towards uh, funds from the FAA and DOT uh, to further fund some of the projects. You hear the grant funding that we get from, from, the, from those agencies, that's great. Uh, if you buy fuel at the airport, the taxes that are on that fuel go to help fund uh, some of the things at the airport. So it isn't necessarily our taxes, our sales taxes that we see here in the community that are paying for the airport necessarily. If we look at the different governance models that we have available, we have airports around the world and even here in the state of Florida that are city owned and run, county, even, even uh, states own uh, and run some of the airports. In addition to that, we have airport authorities, and we'll talk a little bit about that today, both in, in the form of that, in the independent form and in the dependent form. Also, there are other uh, offshoots of that that are port authorities that operate more than just airports, seaports and, and, and rail uh, installations and so on, and they're all combined as one. Good examples of that might be a uh, Port Authority of New York or uh, something like that that you, you see in other uh, large municipalities. And then uh, we also have privately run airports. If you look at this next slide here, it kind of gives you an idea of the, the percentages of ownership that we see out there in the industry. And the, the, the big component of that is really focused on city and airport authority run airports. That seems to be the lion's share of this. Uh, that's pretty much by design. They're, they're uh, the most common out there, and, and you see that there's a lot of flexibility in both forms of governments. Uh, there are similarities, as you'll find out here in a moment, between the two. But there are also, uh, depending on the community and the reasons that you would want to consider uh, a different form of governance that, that may apply to y'all, uh, we, we want to look at the, the potential impacts to the operation 
to the business community. We heard some members com of the community come and speak today, uh, the, the, some of their concerns. And uh, a study that you're pondering would be able to look at that a little further in depth and, and give you some of the facts that you need to make decisions. So in, a, in our municipal form of governance for airport, which, which Tallahassee runs under, I like to, to put this in, in, in two ways. I like to call this potential advantages and potential disadvantages because these, these slides, when we developed these over a year ago to, to communicate this to, to folks, uh, it's looking at the whole cross section uh, you know, across the country and you know, what we tend to see in these forms of governance. But if I start looking at uh, some of the advantages, we definitely have we heard this before with one of the speakers. Uh, accountability to the to the local to, to the citizens, and and you have government officials that are are elected to uh, look after what the, the citizenry is is looking to accomplish. In addition to that, we are also uh, looking to have the access to the city resources that are out there uh, helping run the airport day to day. Uh, there's definitely a economy of scale associated with your procurement processes here at the city level. And so those are all good benefits. Uh, there, there, there are financial benefits that go along with uh, supporting the facility and, and operating it day to day. And in, in some communities, potential disadvantages are that you, you have constituents and you have a lot on your plate as, as uh, commissioners uh, for the city of Tallahassee. And the airport isn't your only thing that you'd be focusing on. So when you're comparing uh, against other forms of governance, there's a potential that you, you've got a lot of different things to juggle in, in the day-to-day -day operation of the airport in, in your duties. Uh, in addition to that, you're also looking at services uh, that the airport pays, correct me if I'm wrong here, David, but you pay back to the city for some of those services. Yep. And in some cases, those services aren't necessarily uh, used as widely as you would if you had to go get those on your own. So you're paying a certain amount like that uh, to, to support that. The other th thing here is that you're not, uh, in, in some cases, we see the city run airports compared to the, um, authorities not as able to act as quick as, as, as others. And so that's, that's another consideration. Um, we, we're looking at speed, making decisions, and supporting business activities, more, more business-friendly environment. We're not saying that this is an unfriendly environment for business, but the, the authorities tend to be a little bit more business-centric, business-focused. Uh, if we move on to the next next slide here and, and, and look at the airport authority form of governance, we're also looking at, as, as we've heard from some speakers, uh, a, a board that maybe is formed to represent uh, a broad array of, of areas within the community, not just the city of Tallahassee in this case. We'd be looking at other areas. It might coincide with your area of uh, the, um, the catchment area, excuse me, thank you. Uh, and that would allow representation accordingly. You have that, uh, like I said before, the ability to, to be more agile and to, to respond perhaps a little more quickly uh, for some, some types of situations affecting the airport. And uh, you have that separation uh, from the government where you actually the focus of that body would be specifically the airport. And that, that's probably the key difference here. Um, as far as disadvantages, I, I, you know, you see them listed here, but the, the thing is that some of these disadvantages don't necessarily apply here. And, and one of the things that a study like the feasibility study that we're talking about, it, it would be able to specifically drill down into to this area and, and specifically point out what some of those efficiencies and deficiencies are. Uh, but this gives you an idea of the types of things that other airports do face. And uh, when you don't have that, uh, those, those uh, services that are readily available here at the city level, uh, you would have to go out 
uh, elsewhere to get those services uh, still, still to operate as an airport uh, authority. Now, one of the, uh, in, in our, an effort to create the authority uh, here or a special district in the state of Florida, it would have to have uh, a, a, a state, it has to be created by the state at the, at the, at the government level. And uh, when we talked a little bit, I think uh, Reese was talking at the beginning in his introductory comments, you know, the, the key, if you were to move forward with a study like this, would be to, you know, complete it in a reasonable amount of time and make sure that it was completed in an effort before the next session so that you could take advantage of, of, of that if you decided to move forward with it. Um, the point here on the next slide I'd like to make is um, in the authority where we have dependent and independent, what we are actually talking about here if we're looking at, to study this further is to study an independent authority. Um, there are if you were to compare a dependent authority where it would be operated by a city or a county government and then have this authority report through them, there, there's very little difference between what your current form of governance and that dependent form of uh, authority governance. So we are actually looking at the independent authority. It's probably the most common that we see out there in, in, in authorities around the country. And it gives them that flexibility to be focused on the, the duties and the business of the airport at, at, as a whole. Um, the, the key here is also as an independent authority, they would have uh, control uh, over, over the resources and the members of, of that body would be appointed, and we heard that a little bit earlier too, be appointed both from the local level as well as, as the governor. That's what we see most common. Here's just an example of, a, uh, there are 24 authorities here throughout the state of Florida. You'll see there's just a cross section, we don't have them all here on this slide, but to give you a cross section of independent and dependent, and it's a case by case uh, basis. As you'll see from some of these that are dependent, uh, they're tied to specifically to a county or city government. And uh, so some of these are very well known to you here, I'm sure. But uh, as, as we look at the independent authorities uh, out there, the, the, especially in these commercial service airports, it is very common uh, to see that independent authority structure. I mentioned this before, uh, last time I got, came before the board uh, on, on this subject, and we have a lot of variability in, in the ability to, to make up that board, to, to make up that authority board of directors. You see a lot of flexibility to, to get a good representation, uh, a good cross-section of the community at large, not just necessarily the city itself. And uh, that, that's good when you, you, you look at the area that, that David was talking about, and how, the caption area, how far you go out to actually uh, serve the flying public. And uh, additionally, uh, you're looking at that as either appointed by the governor or by local, and it's usually a cross-section of both. And uh, we typically see between about seven to 11, seven to 12 members in each of those uh, boards. It's a typical size that you would, you would run across. And the other part of this is that we're looking at staggered terms. Typically, uh, probably very similar to what you have here so that you have that continuity uh, over time. Okay, so with that, I would like to just summarize some things I believe uh, should be considered and I'd like to just run through those real quick for you. Uh, some of the items I believe uh, <laughs> will help us remain competitive as an economic engine for the region and to ensure the long-term success of our airport. Uh, there's a nationwide uh, trend right now in terms of aging infrastructure. Now that's certainly hitting us right now. Uh, we've got runways and taxiway pavements, the pavements on our perimeter road, uh, uh, infrastructure, our terminal facility is coming up on 30 years old. We're having air handlers and elevators and things of that nature that are giving us a little more uh, issues right now. Uh, we got the pipes in the ground, the water leaks and, and busted water mains and things of that nature. Uh, we've got Mother Nature 
herself that uh, rains down on us. And uh, a while back, a bolt of lightning crossed the airport uh, over the top and hit one of the light poles and went down and busted a, a, a water main. Uh, shut down water service to the whole terminal facility back then. So uh, we're dealing with those things. Our goal is always to prevent the operational disruption of air service into this community. Uh, and that we take that take that very seriously. So uh, with that, uh, the aging airport infrastructure, uh, air service development and competitive airfares, uh, we're working on that. Uh, we continue to talk to our current carriers and we're talking to other carriers. It's a work in progress. We always have to create the business case. And without the business community, we won't have the business case. So we're working to identify uh, how we can make things better and more competitive, break down those rules, as I mentioned with the minimum standards documents, and, and make things much more competitive uh, within our market, which will help drive fares down, uh, stimulate the growth and development uh, that leads to additional revenues, uh, uh, both aeronautical and non-aeronautical revenues uh, for us. I believe we uh, stand well postured to bring in a maintenance repair and overhaul type facility. Uh, you see Pensacola doing that now. Uh, they're, it's not their airport. You don't see their airport director in the, in the middle of it. It's becoming a broader community focus and community effort as uh, they receive dollars uh, from Triumph and, and uh, the city and the county, and they're all working collaboratively uh, to bring in uh, this major repair and overhaul facility over there uh, with huge dollars. Uh, also preparing the necessary infrastructure. Uh, a wise man up at uh, Greenville uh, at the closing session uh, talked about ready, set, go. Ready, set, go, and that's positioning ourselves to have the land Think about the stormwater. Think about all these things out in advance so that we are ready, set, go with our development opportunities uh, that we have at, out there at the airport. Uh, those bring in additional revenue streams to us and it helps us offset our operating costs. Mm -hmm. I believe we could identify a master developer that would help us advance and accelerate airport development. I believe we uh, have, uh, as I mentioned, developed new and aeronaut new in innovative aeronautical and non-aeronautical revenue streams. Our current revenue streams and sources are not keeping pace with our needs in terms of that inf aging infrastructure that I talked about. And, and we'll certainly be bringing some other items to you in the future as we uh, look at those runways and the pavements and the terminal and all these other areas. Uh, but um, we need to be thinking about those new and innovative revenue streams as we move forward. I believe we should uh, review uh, the current bylaws and makeup of the Citizens Advisory Committee. We currently have two vacancies. We've got two that will be rolling off in July and uh, uh, two that are up for reappointment. So that's six right there. I, th I think we're at a, a, a good place right now to take a fresh look at where we want to be and where we want to go, and let's write our next chapter and, and uh, look at those bylaws. We've also, as I mentioned, with respect to some of those capital projects, uh, capital project funding needs and identification of new local and regional funding uh, mechanisms required to match those federal and state grant opportunities. Uh, if we receive a state grant, for example, uh, we're required to match 50% of that. So if I get a $5 million grant, uh, I need to put up two and a half million, or uh, if I put, get five million, I need to put up five million uh, from the state. Uh, if I get a federal grant, 90% uh, federal, 5% state, 5% local government. Uh, I'm trying to leverage those investments and make as much uh, progress as we can using other people's money. Uh, but leveraging and getting that return on investment for our, our community that we can. I would much rather make these investments in taxiways and pavements and runways uh, at a nickel on the dollar or 50 cents on the dollar than paying the whole dollar. So we're, we're looking at the proper leveraging of our funds in the background every day, uh, but we do need some help with identifying uh, some, some mechanisms to match those opportunities. Talent and training support. Uh, Again, continuing to work within the community. Uh, you know, a while back I had an MRO facility that was interested in coming here. 
and I took them over to Lively, and I introduced them to uh, the players over there, and, and I was trying to make those connections. We brought OEV in on the conversation, and we were looking at that. Uh, in, the, in that case, we lost them to another airport that was already had the facilities that were built. Uh, they were there and ready to be moved into, and they could start operations tomorrow. So well, we got beat out on that one. But we are seeing a lot more uh, interest in our airport. Uh, just this morning, I got an, an inquiry. Uh, you know, so we're looking at new opportunities every day and trying to be much more responsive as we get these uh, interests that are coming into us and, and being more responsive to them. And lastly, I'll mention is uh, succession planning. I think it's very important that we look at succession planning uh, uh, out at the airport in terms of, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that have been there for a lot of time. Uh, I believe over the next five years, uh, over 25% of our workforce will be eligible for retirement. And so I, I certainly want to uh, take a look at the organization, uh, working with our city leadership and the support that we've got from them. Uh, we're making organizational tweaks. We're adding depth to what we do. And uh, they've been very supportive uh, with our efforts so far. And so we're, we're looking to uh, make the change where we need to make the change, put the focus on the areas that need focus. And uh, we've been making some wonderful progress in that area. And with that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions you may have, Commissioners. David, thank you very much, Phil. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. Before I open it up to the Commissioners, I got three quick questions myself. The recommendation it states uh, for the purpose, maybe this is for the city manager, um, an airport governance feasibility study. I am assuming, though, that, and correct me if we need to add any language in, it's not just governance, but it's also the economic impact, the economic development, all the assets out there. At the airport? Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay, are we all clearing on the same page? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Number two, this does have a budget uh, request of $150,000 approximately. Let me be very clear. This is not coming out of the city's general revenue fund. This is coming out of the airport enterprise fund correctly based on your budget, and it has no impact on the city. It was mentioned during testimony earlier about spending you know, uh, money out of the general revenue. This is coming out of the airport's budget, correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and finally, this is your personal recommendation as well. We are doing extremely well. The airport's on its way up. You have won national awards and recognition. Is this the next step that we need to take in your professional opinion in order to take our community to the next level? This absolutely is the next step. Uh, it's, a, it's a step that we need to go through and uh, make ourselves better, look ahead and write our next chapter, who we want to be and with respect to aviation in this community and the impact, the regional impact that it has for us. Thank you. I look forward to strongly supporting the motion to move forward when one is made. I'll just go straight down the line, Mr. Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A number of issues. <clears throat> the first was the uh, issue of instability, uh, particularly in the leadership uh, at the airport, David, and there, there has been lots of changes over the years, some as frequent as a month. I think we had a director out there for about a month at one point. H how much of that is related to what we're able to compensate our airport director compared to some of the other airports? Yes, sir. It, it certainly has an impact. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, lots of jobs that are out there that various directors have looked at in the past. Uh, other airports uh, do have uh, better competition and more competitive salaries. Uh, airports are always doing various surveys to look at where each mm -hmm. other stand, and uh, uh, it is a very important part of the equation. Yes, sir. So would would you think that that would be something that we might need to look at if we we're going to keep our current structure. Commissioner, let me, let me answer that. Um, I think it's probably most appropriate for me to answer that question. Um, and as you know, we've advertised the, the airport director position, and I'm very pleased that David's one of the candidates. We have about 40 candidates. Uh, and the salary of the airport director will not be an issue. Uh, whatever we need to do to make sure that we have and retain the most qualified airport director I'm committed to that. I have the authority to do that. Clearly, I would work with you guys to make sure we incorporate it properly in the budget. 
but that will not be a barrier to um, uh, uh, recruiting or retaining an airport director. Okay, thank you, Mr. City Manager. I, you know, I, I think what we're going through now lends itself to the instability, uh, because here we are now, uh, over the next nine months, we're not gonna know what in the future our airport is gonna, its governance structure. Uh, that, to me, lends itself to some of that same instability, and maybe even more so than the leadership. Uh, so that's, again, something that we need to take into consideration. I think in terms of, it, it, we, we should have a vision, and I know uh, Commissioner Bryant will agree with me on this, uh, that we should have a vision, a mission statement, uh, our values and objectives. And I think any, any leader coming in, if, if they don't buy into that vision and mission, Maybe that, that's not who we want in that leadership role. Mm -hmm. I think that would address some of the instability that's created uh, when we change airport directors. So um, the, the ridership and fares ha have been brought up, and I give you an, an interesting anecdote. Uh, just recently I was making, uh, and, I, and I know this isn't typical, but it happens. I was just making uh, flight reservations for my family and I, and I, I, I compared the rates out of Jacksonville, uh, which is typically one of our competitors, uh, and Tallahassee. The fares out of Tallahassee were $400 less than what we were offered out of Jacksonville. Same flight, uh, same destination, uh, just different point of departure. But we. Out of Tallahassee, the, the fair, same number of riders, everything was the same except location, $400 less out of Tallahassee. Um, and, and so I guess uh, what, what it brings me to now is, is the role of the advisory committee. Uh, I understood in Greenville that they have a six-person commission uh, that meets six times a year. I'm not quite sure how they can be nimble and agile and quick to make decisions when they only meet six times a year. We meet twice a month uh, as a commission. Uh, the airport director has instant contact with the city managers, mm -hmm. so I that one I couldn't quite sure. understand, no. okay? Uh, so the airport, I, I asked that same question up there. The airport director does have the uh, authority to work with the board chair uh, to call a uh, request a special meeting should something urgent come up uh, that he needs uh, needs their involvement in. I, but I'm not sure that that's as agile as knowing that right. we've got two meetings a month and that, 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 right. that, you know those issues can be brought up right. uh, as opposed to a called meeting where you got to work with people's schedules right. and. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm, I'm bringing up issues that, that uh, uh, we would need to address if this is something that we want to consider. I, I'm not, I, I, I know that, uh, well, and, and I guess we, we would need to look at uh, what the role of the advisory committee or governing authority would be. Uh, in Greenville, it was strictly a policy making authority uh, that was by their charter, was prohibited from being involved in the day-to-day -day operation uh, of the airport. So it, it's, it would seem to me that it was the executive director who drove much of what was, has been accomplished and what is being accomplished uh, uh, at the airport in Greenville. So that, that's something that we uh, might want to take a look at is the exact role of that governing body. Um, the other issue that, that I would want us to consider is what has happened with the state of Florida. Uh, you know, we at one point rushed into the privatization of a lot of state functions. And what we found is that many of those functions had to be brought back into the state because our state employees did a better job uh, 
eventually the, the cost of that privatization would go up, the contract costs would go up, the quality of the services weren't as good as when we had those in-house. And so, again, I'm, I'm not saying that, that private is always better. Uh, and so that's another issue that we need to consider uh, as we go forward. Uh, and then finally, uh, I guess, is if we were to decide to go to a, an authority, how would that transition take place? You know, we've got millions of dollars in public assets in that airport, and we're talking about a private authority that would be separate and apart from you know, the governing body of the city of Tallahassee and the city manager. So how does that transition take place? How does the authority assume uh, those millions of dollars uh, in public assets? Would they have to purchase all of that from? I mean, so again, just issues that we need to uh, think about a as we consider uh, this whole issue. And then lastly, you know, a lot of the disadvantages uh, that were talked about in terms of the um, the current makeup of our board, uh, the municipally owned, I, I think those are things that, that David has addressed in his presentation. You know, the business-like function of the airport director uh, and many of the other things that, that, were, that were cited as disadvantages are issues that we could address uh, in the current structure. So again, just issues that we need to consider as we move forward mm -hmm. with this. I, I, I don't know um, what the problem is that we're attempting to resolve. Um, and I'm not sure that I'm in favor of uh, a feasibility study uh, because I think that the issues that have been raised are issues that uh, but I, I do agree with you, David, that we need to take another look at the current makeup of our, our board. Because I know that, and I was told that two meetings prior to the vote that was taken to support the authority, there was no quorum of the board. That troubles me. Mm -hmm. Because if they are there to assist you in the operation, of, we, we need to have people who are going to be committed to that and show up for meetings. So, so maybe we need to look at the, the, the structure of that board, the composition of that board, and the kind of people that are, would be necessary to make it a more efficiently and fully functioning board. Again, issues that, that we need to consider as we go forward uh, and determine if this is the direction that we want to go in, even with the feasibility study. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Would you just go down, Commissioner yeah, Matlow? Sure. I'll, I'll go next. Um, well, thank you for the presentation. I think that was uh, fantastic. Yep, and uh, congratulations you. to you and your team on all, on all your accomplishments. Um, Mr. Baker, I had, um, I've heard two um, main things from the audience, and that's economic development and, and uh, uh, fares and ridership. So I just wanted to um, figure out if we switch to an airport authority, how much lower would fares in Tallahassee be? Couldn't specifically answer that, but I can <laughs> give it a try. We we tend to see lower fares across the board at airports that have that flexibility and and, and happen to be run as an as an authority. Okay, it, it's not there's not a direct correlation, but that we do we do tend so to see that, that. Is that an anecdotal cor yes, correlation? Okay, um, we're trying to be fact based here because I, I mean I think this is a serious conversation, and we sure. want to make sure we're dealing in facts and not um, opinions or what happened in one city. But if a uh, governance change is beneficial for Tallahassee, we want to know and we want to do it. But I just want to make sure we're dealing in concrete facts and not speculations. What, one last thing I'll mention along, along those lines are is that when, when we're looking at air service and the, and the type of air service and the frequency, it, it has a lot to do with the way the airlines are dealing with the particular owner of the airport. And uh, if they, if the airlines have a, a better relationship or more flexibility of dealing with an authority versus, let's say, the city, 
you know, that, that could have an impact on, on how they provide service to your community. Right. And so I mean, that is a fact. Is, is there any data on the, the economic impact and economic development in cities that have an airport authority versus a municipal run uh, airport? Commissioner, that FDOT study, uh, if you uh, go to their website, it, it has every airport in Florida as a part of that study. Okay. And what, what's the busiest airport in, I guess, America? Anybody? Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, what's their government structure? Uh, their uh, city, uh, they recently uh, were exploring coming up under a state uh, authority uh, that I believe just recently was announced that they are choosing to stay with the city governance structure. Okay. Uh, just funny anecdote, because I grew up in Tallahassee and uh, used to fly by myself and always flew out of Tallahassee. And then now I have uh, booking my first vacation with my new six-month-old baby and I got to buy four tickets. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really conscious of price more than I may have used to be when it was just me. And um, it's very tempting to see the low fares in Atlanta and see what I could save, you know, driving, driving up there with, you know, their, it's municipal run government, but they have the lowest fares um, from what I can see. But normally, um, as an individual, it, it's less of, of an impact. So I just uh, find that interesting while we're, you know, just talking mm -hmm. what's good at one airport versus what's good at another. Um, so I think um, just from the presentation, I, I, I see where we're going with economic development. I see all the hard work you're doing and all the rewards. Um, and I just can't come to the logical conclusion that the next step would be to dramatically overhaul our governance, it seems like. Um, it seems like we're on the right track, and I don't see, um, you talk about instability. Um, we looked up the investment in the airport over the last decade was 93 million about, and then the four-year um, investment we're making now is about 170 million. So we're focused on this issue, and I, I really want to thank uh, the Chamber of Commerce for um, continuing to ride us on it, because, you know, the squeaky wheel uh, gets the grease, and I think that attention is really what narrowed this city's focus in, in the work you're doing. And I, I, I just think it's exceptional. So I, I would ask, I wouldn't support um, a feasibility study today um, just because I'm not going to support an airport authority this year, because I think where we're at is we're spending $170 million. We're working on a master plan. Um, we have a new city manager. We're going to have a new airport director, and 80% of our board is brand new. So this, this is all new leadership, and how do we test what works and what's failed until we give it a shot? So, I, I mean, I would ask, I would think between this board, if, if we don't have the power to make our airport an economic Mm -hmm. engine for our community, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. What's our job? Because I, I think this is our job, and I think we can do it. Um, I've heard a lot on the campaign trail, um, Mr. Mayor, and I think you're a visionary uh, for your view of the airport, talking about <laughs> the rail tracks and, you know, recruiting companies and landing, and I was like, yes, I want to do that. And, um, but I also think um, you should have the opportunity to do that. I think you can go out. I think you could meet with those companies and land some people um, to bring it here. So I'm not against the airport authority. I'm just against it right now. Um, I think um, see how the master plan goes in two years if we're thinking, you know, we've had a roadblock, you know, we're, we're going in the wrong direction. We don't want to govern this. But just being so new, um, it, just, it just doesn't seem to make sense um, for me um, at this point. And then if we did go through with a feasibility study, you know, I would just like to have the details of what we're actually analyzing, because I think the economic development impact and the fares are the two th things people want to know the most about, and we should be comparing those and see how it would um, adjust to our structure. All right, thank you. Commissioner Williams-Cox. Thank you, um, Mayor. These have been all great comments and uh, dynamic presentation. Um, th thank you, David, and thank you to your staff. Um, I've flown in and out of the uh, airport, and um, I, I enjoy the FAMU room most of all. <laughs> Let me just say, keep that room there, and I'll keep flying out of Tallahassee. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm, uh, as many of you know, I'm going back to Greenville, and I'm leaving tonight at the city commission meeting. And, um, We're going to have you out of here on time. <laughs> if not, you'll be finishing without me. <laughs> um, but in, in, in preparing for travel, I had the option of flying, uh, doing a direct flight from Tallahassee to Charlotte or going ahead flying, you know, from here to Miami to, to um, uh, Greenville. Greenville. And so we decided to go ahead and because we, we were going to get there late anyway, we might as well land in Greenville. But I appreciated the fact that I could fly to Charlotte. 
which is just a short distance to, to drive back into Greenville. Um, and I was, uh, you know, and then when we were there visiting, I was thinking, you know, maybe I should have just gone on to Charlotte and, and come on back. But nevertheless, I think that what's most important to the, to, to the residents of Tallahassee, and I, some of the speakers were saying that the airport is our greatest asset. I have to disagree. Our greatest asset are the members of our community and what they need and what they want. While we're sitting here talking about the governance structure for the airport, we got people who need sidewalks. We got people who need street lights. We got people who need food. I just bought food for someone who was hanging out where I was getting food for them. We, we, we've got to stick with our priorities. And we, we, we at our retreat, we settled on some priorities. And we, we really need to focus on those. Now, is the airport a priority? Uh, may not, it may not be explicitly, but it is a community asset. And we have to leverage it and use it wisely so that it can feed the other parts of our priorities. Um, I understand the need for business travel. I also understand the need for family travel. And I was glad to hear from uh, Commissioner Richardson that um, Jacksonville is now getting to be uh, not necessarily where you want to go to fly out of. We can fly out of right here. And I think that if we keep getting our ridership up and we keep proving that what we're doing is the right thing, then that will continue to happen. And we will be able to do things right here in our own back door. What the thing, one of my takeaways from Greenville was we're doing a lot of good things here in Tallahassee. And it includes our airport and the, the, what the staff is doing there. And I, I you know, I, I, like, I would like to do the feasibility study, but I'm telling you, listening to the, the watching the presentation and getting the numbers and looking at where we're, where we're, we're trending to, to me, the feasibility study should be the next step to take us there, not changing the structure, but using the current structure and seeing how far that will take us before evaluating whether we need to change the structure. Because changing the structure is taking us into a dark place that we, we do not know what's going to happen. Right now, we can see we're, we're trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anybody who does analysis, data analysis, will say, if you're trending where you're trying to go, why would you change course? It just, to me, it just doesn't make sense. So I came in here with an open mind, an open book. You filled it with information that I believe is true. And so now I'm, I'm trying to determine, do we need to do a feasibility study on governance? Uh, but do we need to do a feasibility study on what we need to continue to do to take the airport to the next level? So um, I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a, um, a quandary, because if I had to vote right now, I would say, forget the governance. Let's get busy doing it, making it an economic driver. Mm -hmm. Let's do the feasibility study to determine what kind of economic um, drivers we need to keep the airport trending in the upward direction. So that's, that's where I am. I'm focused on the economics, not the governance structure. Commissioner Bryant. All right. I guess I'm last, but not least. <laughs> <laughs> Let me first say, David, that, that the presentation was very good. And, and you know, I know a little bit about the airport. So uh, I am extremely pleased that where I used to see, what I used to see and what I see today, and you, you, you very well understand that. Um, I am, and I appreciate the comments from my fellow commissioners. I will say that uh, I support doing the feasibility study for three reasons. First of all, it was recommended by the city. Number two, it was supported by you, and you were the person that brought to us today the many accomplishments of the airport. Uh, we are trending in the right direction, but being able to do this feasibility study, and we probably could broaden the scope, as um, Commissioner Williams-Cox talked about, but we need to do the feasibility study, take everything that we have that we know and then put it up against where we're trying to go. Because the third factor that we have to consider is the economic engine of this city. The airport obviously is positioned probably to take the lead in this area. 
we won't know that, though, until we go ahead. I mean, I got a good feeling that that's what it is. But I think that the feasibility study positions us with concrete data to support going in one direction or the other. And it will hopefully stand on its own merit, whichever way it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hopeful that as we complete the study, that we as a commission will be in the best position to not only vote on governance, not only vote on business businesses actually coming into our community, which I'm sure everyone supports. I think we can all see that the more viable this community becomes with businesses that will bring in passengers, uh, it, Really, we're not really talking about how can we get more people on the airplane until we get some businesses to bring them here. Uh, right now, we have so many people that's gonna come visit. You saw the study that was provided to us regarding visitors who come here and why they come. Uh, before now, I probably would have thought football games brought a lot of people to Tallahassee. But I found out when I reviewed the information that that's near the bottom. So we have to, in no uncertain terms, put together some kind of economic vitality for our community that will increase the load for flights and thereby increase, obviously, and decrease prices <laughs> and increase the number of people who come to our community for business reasons. So I'm going to support what my city manager, my airport director has come to us today to say that they would like a feasibility study. Uh, I would, would certainly not oppose the broaden the scope from just governance uh, to include as much as we can get for that $150,000. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm all in favor of that also. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Richardson is correct. It, you know, I think we do have to have a vision for our community, and I think it has to include all of the assets that we have, and we do need to write it down. And we need to remember why we're here and then as we look toward the future, leverage all of the assets that we have to move us forward to where we want to go. So, Mr. Mayor, that, those are my comments. I appreciate it. Any further comment? Commissioner Williams-Cox. Following up with, with what um, Commissioner Bright said, um, Mr. City Manager, if yes, we were to broaden the scope, because, you know, you've estimated the cost for a feasibility study, for the scope that has been defined at $150,000. But if we tack on um, looking at um, potential economic drivers, um, you have any idea what that the scope, the broadening of that scope would mean? I know what happens when scope changes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Commissioner Williams-Cox, first of all, let me, let me say I think it's just the opposite. I think it's narrowing the scope. From what I understand, and y'all do not want to have a study regarding the governing structure you want to take a look at the economic development. So we would take governing structure off the table and actually, just look at the assets? No, actually, that's not that what Commissioner not Bryant said. Right. <laughs> that's no. why I'm asking for clarification. Okay. No, I, I, we we're talking about adding on. I think yeah. we do need to look at it. I really don't want us to come back three years from now talking about governance, when in fact we can do that right now. So, yeah. Yes. Let, me, let me do my best to answer that. Okay. And, and I will tell you. We won't I, hold oh, you to it, but we just. <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I always hate to put these values in these agenda items, but clearly we're trying to give our best estimate in terms of how much a professional study would cost. Of course, we go procure the services and try to get them as, as low as we can. I think that we could revise the scope. I, I believe a professional evaluation, the mayor asked for a little clarification at the beginning, probably is $150,000 inclusive of all the scope that you guys have discussed, whether it be only a feasibility and governance. I don't think you can limit it to that. I think you have to evaluate economic impact, right. the impact of the governance, airfares, those things. I, I believe $150,000 is probably the right number for a professional study of almost any kind. Um, again, we'd have to procure it, and I don't know, but I, I think that's probably a good number. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, thank Mr. You, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Just a couple of other things that I wanted to to mention. You know, when when we were when when uh, uh, crime in our community rose to the level that it did, and we were identified as a community that had the highest crime rate in the state, we all were alarmed by that, of course, and that became our number one priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and we started to not only 
talk about it, but we put our money where our mouths were. And and Ms. Barber, you were you took a leadership role in that, but but the other point there that I'm I'm getting to is that we were laser focused on that issue. I think if, and I agree with uh, Commissioner Matlow in this regard, if we laser focus on the airport, if you came to us like Chief DeLeo and, and did periodic updates on where we're going with the airport, that suggests to our community that we're laser focused on that economic uh, development asset in our community. So that's one thing. The other is, you know, we're, 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 we're talking about this, uh, well, let me use this example. When we talked about the law enforcement campus, we said we wanted to get community input before we invested that $60 million, and we did that. We, we went out to the community, and we gave them an opportunity to talk to us and give us their input, and based on that input, we kind of reversed course. We're talking millions of dollars here that could, you know, we could be contemplating turning over to a private authority. Yet there's not been a word about going to the community and seeing what it is they want, what kind of input we get from the community as to the direction they want to see their airport go in. So again, just something for us to think about. And we can say, well, you know, we can take it to the community after we get the feasibility study done, but it's my opinion that you want to get those those opinions and that input up front uh, because people will think, well, the decision has already been made. You're doing the study. You know what you want to do. Why should we even give you our input uh, at this point on the tail end? So just, again, other issues for us to consider uh, as we decide where we're going to be on this vote this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Matlow. Uh, Mr. City Manager, I just had one. When will we have a permanent um, airport director in place? We are uh, nearing the process of interviews. Again, I, I think I said earlier we had about 40 applicants, good good uh, applicants from around the country. I was pleased with the list. Uh, the next steps, and that will be within the next couple of weeks, we'll impanel, impanel the uh, interview committee, which would include a member of the, in fact, the chairman of the airport advisory board so we can get some outside input on that. So I would say uh, the process will take several more weeks um, and then, uh, of course, I think we'd be at the point of making an offer. Okay. Um, and and don't oh. take this the wrong way, David, but um, I, I, I don't feel comfortable um, moving forward with a study until we have a permanent director because if it's not you, Maybe they have a different recommendation or, or they have a different idea of what they want to be studied. Until we know what the permanent leadership of the airport is, I, I don't really feel um, comfortable forcing, forcing their hand on something. And I'd also be concerned um, if applicants are unsure of our governance structure, if it's going to switch with those high quality applicants want to apply here and come to our city knowing that um, they could be answering to a totally different board um, a year from now. Um, um, the other point on that is the, the $150,000 is, is still a lot of money, and um, I'm, I'm dead set on not um, supporting an airport authority this year, and uh, whether it's budgeted or not, um, I, have, I have a lot of bank accounts, and I know if I don't spend money from one, that money's still there, and, and will be available to be spent on something different. So um, I'm not going to support that study. Would, um, what In the presentation in the airport master plan, um, when will that be the finalized? Should be finalized by June, Commissioner. Okay. Have you given any thought to economic development within that plan? Absolutely. Okay. And we set the stage for economic growth and development and future needs, uh, aviation-related needs of this community. Okay. Well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that plan and seeing what we've already done in the space of economic development. So it, it just feels like this is all largely premature. Um, we don't have um, all the facts we need for what we're already doing, and we don't know who's going to be in charge. And there's all, all so many unknowns. And really, I, I just don't see the rush in it. I think we're we're, we're doing well. If this comes back up again in a, in a year or two, you know, let's have the conversation if we feel like it's time to change in. Commissioner Williams Cox, and then Commissioner Bryant. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm Commissioner sorry. Williams Cox, Commissioner Bryant did have her hand up first, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. All right, Commissioner Bryant. Let, let me just follow up to something uh, Commissioner Matlow said, because maybe maybe the plan is to ask David to remain 
until we finish the study. And then we'll know what direction we're going in. Rather than, and I, and Mr. City Manager, I know that's uh, down in, not outside of my lane yeah. in the policy arena. I do recognize that. But I'm just trying to address the, the issue that I thought I heard uh, Commissioner Matlow say in terms of moving forward and not knowing where, where we are. Uh, and I do know that, that David has been doing an awesome job. Commissioner Bryant, let me, let me jump in real quick, okay? Sure. Because we're, we're treading on some very delicate yeah. um, um, statements. Uh, I respect Commissioner Matlow's statement. I want to remind all of us that by law, local ordinance, we cannot get involved with the hiring and firing um, of, of city staff. And so I, I, let's, let's turn the conversation, let's keep going with the conversation as is without discussing the, the individuals for the position, if we could, by recommendation of the city attorney. <laughs> well, that settles that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Let, let me just go back to my final statement then. Uh, I think it's, it's critical that we actually go ahead and conduct the feasibility study, uh, get the information, and be positioned really to inform the community with more information such that if we do outreach, they will be better positioned to make informed decisions. Thank you, sir. Great. Commissioner Williams-Cox. My concern is also stability um, of leadership. If I was uh, one of those applicants and I was interviewing for the position and there's conversation going on that something might change, something as critical as governance structure, which would mean that um, if, if going, uh, for, going towards an, an authority, they would then choose their own director. What would make me want to to continue to pursue this this position. So I think we, we do have to be very careful because we, we have applicants out there, we have position being advertised, we have applicants out there, the process is already underway. Yeah, and I know we're doing a, doing a study, but it is, and it's been projected it would be nine months. We could possibly, um, um, what's the word, do something to the pool, reduce the pool uh, of applicants because of the uncertainty and the, and the instability. And I think that too lends to um, the lack of being able to move quickly for economic development because of the, the con continued instability. So I just want to put that out there that I do, I'm still having trouble with the governance piece because it has great implications on the hiring of a permanent director. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. David, Phil, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Once again, I want to congratulate the airport for the amazing work that you all have done and being recognized. David, congratulations for being recognized as well. No further action. We stand adjourned. Regularly scheduled meeting at 4 o'clock.